Hey guys, all out war 76 here bringing you my first video for scrap mechanic and I am making this video for a very specific reason. I had an issue. Um, you might have had an issue with this, but um, the issue I had was, let me show you what I found. I found one of these guys, okay? But it wasn't just because I found this guy. Because actually, I found this guy before. It's because I found him. I found him. And I found him. Okay? I found a camp with three of these guys. And this area is so far away from the uh, repair shop. That it took me, I believe, I could be wrong, I think it took it at the very least a half an in-game day to get here. And it's really far away. So this is not something where I could just, like the first uh, cage farmer that I found, I just whacked him with my uh, hammer here until I got to the trader. But um, this is way too far. This would take a ridiculous amount of time. And honestly, I don't care how overpowered any of the weapons are. It just wouldn't be worth it, in my opinion. So I was trying to figure out a way on how to make some sort of contraption or a vehicle or some way to just even get them onto the vehicle. And I wasn't sure on how to do it, so I asked in the Steam forums, and Steam user R1552 responded, and he gave me some ideas on what to do, and I'm going to show you what I built, and, you know, um, I'm going to show you exactly how to make the mechanical parts. I'm not going to show you how to make the actual um, flatbed that I make, but I'm going to show you how to make the mechanical parts. Um, and it's actually really simple. It only requires one controller. Um, I believe that's pretty much it. Like as far as expensive components go, I think it was one controller, a switch, and two rotors, and like some pipes and stuff like that. But uh, I'm going to show you how to make that. I just want to show you this little area here. So it does exist. There are areas where there are more than one cage farmer. So uh, we'll get into that. Okay. Now let's actually get into making this thing. It's fairly simple. Um, all you need is a switch, a controller, and two rotors, and then the materials you want to make it out of. You don't need these pipes. I'm going to show you uh, how, how simple it actually is. If you don't need instructions on you know, how to build uh, this little hitch right here or the wagon on the back, basically all you need to do is take, I'm going to do step-by-step -step instructions, but for those who want to skip that, all you need to do is connect your switch to your controller and your controller to one of the rotors, and then you're going to set the second um, setting to about 120. That's going to depend on your height of um, your door and the height of your car off the floor. You'd have to adjust that, but you're going to want it coming forward. If uh, You might have to adjust it to like 105 depending you know or maybe 150 150 would probably be too steep but that part you might have to adjust but for those who want the actual step by step i'm going to go through that right now um first thing first i'm going to take this apart and i'm not going to build it this way because you don't need all this extra stuff. Um, one thing I wanted to say, you, as you're going to see later, this originally had a top on it, and I had to take it off because the cages didn't fit. So this size right here will fit exactly two caged farmers. So if you're wondering what size it is, we'll count the blocks. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, that 13. So it's 13 this way, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 this way. So uh, 13 wide, 16 long. Um, the height is completely up to you. Like I said, this wouldn't fit it if I caged them in, but you would have to go two blocks higher. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You'd have to go at least 10 to be able to uh, block them off. Okay, so that is that. I will go over the hitch after. Um, that's really simple as well. But basically, to make this door, let's just get this stuff on our hotbar here. 
So we're going to need that and that. We're just going to make it really simple. Just place the switch wherever you want the switch. You're going to take your bearings. There's two of them. They take your controller. Oh, we need to eat. Okay. You take your controller. You can put it anywhere you want. You could even uh, p remove some blocks and put it in the floor if you want. So we'll just put that there. And then we're going to take our blocks. And we're just going to drag that across. Now that is attached. Um, and then from there, you can do whatever you want. Let's just close the whole thing off. Okay. So now that we have the door there, you can see it coming out a little bit. It's coming out like that because I don't have it on the um, lift. If it was on the lift, it would automatically close. So now that you have your door there, all you need to do is grab your connect tool, connect the switch to the controller, connect the controller to one of the bearings. You don't need to connect it to both, just to one. And then open up your controller. Um, this is the rotations that it will make when you press the button. So when it's off, you want it on zero because that will be straight up and down. And the second one, you want to adjust that to about 120. You may have to change it um, up or down a little bit depending on how big your door is and how high your wheels are off the floor. But you're going to want to go in this forward direction. So once that's set, all you do is press the button. And that's it. You're going to see it lift off the ground a little bit. Um, it depends on the kind of surface you are. Sometimes it works perfectly flush without lifting, but that part doesn't matter. And then you press the button again, and it will close. So that is it. That is how simple it is just to make that uh, door to keep these uh, cage farmers trapped in. And I suggest if you make this, you make it on a hitch like this. Like, a, like your own wagon and attach it because if you put it on make it as part of your car it's going to be really heavy and it's going to be hard to maneuver okay so now that we have the door part taken care of um the last thing i'll show you guys if you don't know already how to make it is the hitch and you don't need to make it out of blocks you can make it out of uh these pipes you can make the bendy pipes and make it look nice like an actual hitch um i just did this really quick okay Actually, I just wanted to move it a little bit further out of the way so things are easier to see. So we're going to make this. In order to do that, we're just going to uh, remove these blocks just to show you how it works. Move this car a little further up. Like I said, you can design it any way you want. You don't need the pipes. I'll show you how to make it without the pipes. All you would do is just replace one block with the pipe. Oh, am I going to be able to get this thing up here? There we go. So basically, the way I made it, I put a pipe here, right there. But uh, if you don't have pipes, you just put a block there. You can make this as long or as short as you want. You don't want to put this on the lift. So you can get at least two blocks here. You could also make this part as long as you want. And you're going to take your bearing and you're going to put it on top. Okay, so you got your bearing, and you got your little uh, hitch piece here. You're going to take this part off the lift, and then you're going to put your vehicle on the lift. Raise it up a bit so it's easier to, to attach. Uh, grab your um, welding tool, and you can actually highlight blocks. I recommend highlighting the top piece. That makes it easier to attach. Otherwise, you might have to rotate and do a lot of things. But once you see it lined up like that, you just left click and it is attached. So then you can remove this and you'll see your hitch is on. And you can see it uh, rotating there with the bearings so you can turn. So uh, that is it. Um, hope you enjoyed that part. I'm gonna, if you're interested, I'm gonna take you to the area where I found uh, three farm cagers, caged farmers. <laughs> Say farmed cagers. So I'm gonna take you there, and uh, I'm gonna take two of them back because I couldn't fit three. So if you're interested in that part, stick around. But uh, this is it right here. I hope it helped. All right, guys. Uh, so there we go. Okay, so I wanted to show you how I found this area. 
um, with the three caged farmers in it. I came to a dead end. Okay, I know all maps are different. Okay, um, I have no idea if they do have all the same sort of landmarks and things like that. But this was a dead end. I traveled really far. Um, I think it was three quarters of a full day to get here. Um, just because I wanted to try and get to the end of each side that I could possibly get to. I think the worlds are infinite, but I did find an end here. Maybe you can go across the water. Maybe there's something that way that I didn't explore. But this is the end of the road here, and there's water on that side. There is water on that side, as you can see. But uh, right over here, I noticed the path. And when I was driving to it, it's easier to... Oops. It's easier to see when you're actually driving because um, you're a little higher off the ground. So I saw that dirt path and I've never seen a path like that before. So I decided to follow it and that is how I got to the camp that had three caged farmers. So I'll just take a little uh, quick run up here. Now um, there were a bunch of haybots here. I believe they're haybots, the ones that hold the pitchforks. I get confused with names, but I just follow the path. I think there was at least three on the path, and there was about maybe four or five in this camp. But uh, that's how I got to the camp. Alright, so I'm going to see how tough this is going to be to load them on. Oof. I got a pretty far way to go. To get him to the truck. I started with the guy that was the furthest away. I figure you might as well start with the toughest part first. I'm just going to follow the road because I don't remember the exact way. Yeah, I think I could just... Yeah, there we go. We're almost there. That wasn't too bad. And that was the guy that was the furthest away. So this should be pretty easy. Now that I think about it, <laughs> this cage might not be large enough. We'll see. Come on. Oh, it is not large enough. Hmm. Do I have wood on me? I do not. Damn it. We got one in. I don't even know if we'll be able to fit two in here. But either way, let's test this out. So we're going to close it. Let's 
try and move it around a bit, go over some bumpy stuff, see if he pops out of the top. I mean, if he does, we can always build it up like a tile or two higher. I don't think we'd have an issue. But it seems stable enough. Okay, a little cutaway there. Um, I decided to knock them out, knock one out, and bring another one, just to see if I could fit two in here. I thought this was big enough for three, but I forgot how large these things were. These cages. So let's see. Can we get them in there? All right, that should close. I hope. Ooh, that's not good. That might not work. Try a little bit of uh, repositioning real quick. And then we're just going to wing it. We're going to try. Let's see if I can... If I can knock this... You know what? I wonder... Can we... I wonder if we could build on these things. Let me knock one out and see. If I could build on one, then I could attach them to my car, but I doubt that's going to work. Let's just try. No. Can attach to the floor, cannot attach to him. Okay. Figured as much. I don't know if these are equal on all sides. It looks like they are. Try and knock them a little further in. I should have made this a little bit larger. But for most people's cases, you, I think you're pretty much only going to find one at a time. I found uh, the first one I found was near the trader. Then I found one slightly away from him in the same area. This actually the same biome. And then I found another one in the burning area. So I found three total that were alone by themselves. And then I did find uh, this area with three in it. So I found a total of six, but only one of the areas had three. Let's see. Please don't go all the way up. There we go. And if it didn't, I could actually have uh, adjusted the controller there so it didn't close all the way. So I'm going to have to come back for one. I'm not going to bore you with that in this video, but what I want to do is show, give you guys an idea of how far I had to travel to get here. So what are we at? We're at 20... We're like four hours away from midnight. I don't know if I'm going to speed this up or not. In this part right here, but uh, give you an idea. I'm going to go straight to the trader, and the trader is not far away from the uh, from my base, which is uh, the repair shop, mechanic shop, or whatever it's called, garage. I'll give you an idea of how far it is. And there's no markers, there's no beacons or anything in the game as of uh, the time of this recording. So you pretty much do have to remember the way you go. But so far, at least in my experience on this world, I, this is my second world. I haven't gotten, I didn't get far on my first. Um, I've noticed as long as you follow the roads, it's it's fairly easy. There's not too many ways that split, and then split another way and split another way. Usually, they'll split into a dead end, um, or there'll be some sort of rememberable uh, landmark, so you don't get lost too bad. But you do have to remember at this point in the game. Hopefully there will be landmarks or, I'm not landmarks, I mean uh, some sort of beacons. Because there is, the system's already in place as you can tell when you plant um, crops and you get the warning. You can see that warning as to where your base is from really far away, so. The uh, mechanics are already in the game, but uh, they're just not implemented yet, so as, as of now you kind of have to remember where you're going.
But yeah, maybe we'll speed this up a bit here. This isn't good. Alright, I'm gonna have to adjust this engine a bit just to get up that hill. Why am I not turning? What is going on with my turning? It's only turning one way. There we go. Now it's turning left. Alright, I guess I'm going to leave it on this power until I'm sure I get up these hills. I don't think I'll need it again until I get up to the trader. kind of lost. I don't know if I should adjust the speed of the engine, that mean the power of the engine to see gas, but I'm not that far from the trader now. So yeah, I was wrong. It definitely wasn't a half a day or three quarters of a day. It was much shorter. I'm not too far. Uh, yeah, I gotta adjust. I'm going way too fast to control this vehicle. want to get away from that bot. Alright. Bring that down too. And now we're not too far. Okay, so you can see if you look on the right there, you should be able to see that wrench glowing. It's kind of behind some trees now, but it's right there. Let's see if I could zoom in on that. Oh, you can't see it anymore. It's behind the burning forest. We'll see if I could zoom in on it uh, later on if I edit it. <laughs> might not be able to. You might have to look at it on the right, but it's not that far. Um, straight ahead. It's kind of blurry, but that's the packing station. And right here, straight ahead, is the trader. You can sort of see the packing station. It's dark out, so... A little difficult to see it. But you should be able to see the lights coming from That's the packing station. Oh, don't want to get stuck. All right, we made it. We only got one guy uh, left to transport. That was fairly successful. Oh, why is this not turning properly now? that switch. Get these guys out of here.
Ooh. Classic rookie mistake right there. Is he going to roll out of the red? All right, there we go. Let's see if this works. There we go. That's one. That is two. You're at the trader. And yes, you can see right there, we got two of these guys in there. Great success, yes. All right. What are we going to get? I don't have broccoli yet. When I get broccoli, though, where is this thing? That's what I'm going to get. That shotgun right there. Definitely want to get the Gatler, but that's going to be later. That's pineapples. I haven't gotten broccoli yet either. If you have the spud gun, I really need to go into that uh, warehouse. But uh, yeah, you can see it works. So that is that right there. All right, guys. Well, that's about it for this video. Um, I hope that helped because I am not mecha mechanically inclined whatsoever. So... I have no idea how these things work. I did figure out this here. If you're interested in something like this um, for farming trees, let me know and I'll probably make a video for this as well. Oops. Let me get on here and show you how it works. Um, I got a bunch of uh, switches here. Some of them aren't connected to anything. Like three is this little uh, horn dude here. But uh, one turns on the blades. Two extends them on pistons. Uh, Four is my headlight, so that doesn't do anything, and uh, five rotates them. Like that. So a real quick demonstration on what I would do is basically go up to a tree with them extended like this, turn them on, cut down the tree, and then hit my hotkey to turn the blades down if it works oh I'm hitting the wrong one oops it's that one so you see as it's turning it down it'll start cutting it up still takes a little while but it's a lot faster than getting out and doing it manually by hand so uh, if that's something you guys be interested in uh, I'd be willing to make a video on that as well okay guys but uh, that is it for this video and uh, take care